Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. How secure do you think your kids are in the classroom if shots were to ring out and kids were told to lock down? Would the shooter be able to get inside? For weeks, Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley has been digging into how schools in the Valley are keeping your children shit safe. She so shows us the improvements still needed and the financial barriers that stand in the way. The most prized possession a parent has comes to us and for a moment to think we can't keep them safe, it's, it's heartbreaking. Safety is forever evolving for schools, learning from the districts already victimized and taking advantage of new tactics and technology to better prepare should evil ever walk through their doors. You hope and pray that it never happens, you know, here or locally. But the reality of the world today is we have to be prepared and have to uh, uh, know how to respond should the unthinkable happen. Part of that preparedness lies in shooter drills and lockdown training. The other half of the safety equation lies in these. Truly comes to your first line of defense, and that is your locked exterior doors. If they cannot get in, there's not much damage they can do. Statistically, uh, it gains you about 1.5 to 1.7 seconds in a situation by already having your door locked and closed. A 2020 survey by the National Center on Education Statistics found one in four schools across the country do not have classroom doors that can be locked from the inside. A key security feature missing in the devastating school shooting in Uvalde, Texas this spring. If I would say there's one major issue in our building, it's that. Northern Cass, Central Cass and Kindred are just a few of the schools in the valley without interior locking doors, which has forced districts to get creative to ensure everyone in the building is secure. All of our teachers pretty much have their doors locked all the time, but during the school day, they put that magnetic plate on so that it doesn't lock. And in the case of an emergency, all they need to do is remove that metal plate. The door automatically locks. To combat the security shortfalls, districts try to ramp up safety measures elsewhere, corralling visitors to only come in through the office, signing the guests in with their driver's licenses, and escorting them to where they need to be. They'll scan their license, and it's able to do quick background checks. I think the greater challenge is our community expects access to the school. This is their school. And sometimes it can be conflict if they perceive that they're not allowed into the school because, you know, don't you trust me? Uh, what do you think I'm going to do? And you want to be welcoming, but you've got to do it within a reasonable means as well. To upgrade locks for every door within Northern Cass's building, Steiner says it could cost between 50 and $150,000. Money Steiner says the district doesn't have the budget for. And at Central Cass, Deputy Scott says the district is in dire need of an upgraded security system. And one bid to the district estimated the work would total more than $250,000. But Scott's grant to the state asking for that money has already been denied once. It's hard to get funding for something that people really don't see or understand how important all those pieces are. The traditional model of funding schools just does not provide for those extra uh, expectations that are placed on schools. And I think the state legislature is really going to have to take a look at how schools are funded. Now, Deputy Scott and former Fargo police officer turned school safety coordinator Taylor Savageo both emphasized the importance of staying one step ahead, saying while schools learn from each tragedy, so do the criminals. All to say new safety measures and technology will forever evolve, with all school officials echoing Superintendent Fornes' sentiment that there's just not enough money to keep up with those changes. Now, I do want to add, I reached out to more than 15 local school districts for this story, but only a handful of those were willing to talk about this on the record. Some citing privacy concerns, others just flat out not responding. Now, Mike Stacy coming up tomorrow, part two to this investigation as schools are asking, but are state officials listening? Can more money be handed out for security? And if so, how soon? We try to find the answers to that tomorrow right here again on Valley News Live at 6. All right, Bailey Hurley reporting live in the studio and the large school districts, Fargo, West Fargo and Moorhead Public Schools all got back to us and state most, if not all doors in their districts locked from the inside.